Hello again, and welcome to another sound design tutorial. Uh, today we're going to be uh, using some different software than we usually use. Um, we're going to be trying to make some computer glitchy and error sound effects, uh, but instead of using Logic Pro, as I usually do, we're going to be using Audacity. Uh, now, I'm sure a lot of you have heard of Audacity. It's basically just a free uh, digital audio workstation you, you can download, and if you're interested in getting into audio, it's a very good place to start. Um, me personally, I did use it once or twice when I was first getting into audio, but I quickly moved on to some other software. Um, but to be honest, Audacity is quite surprising in that it has a few functions that not or a lot of functions you don't usually see in many other popular digital audio workstations. For example, the one we're going to be using today. So, like I said, we are looking at creating some glitchy software computer sound effects. And the way we're going to be doing that is by importing raw data into Audacity. And that can make some really twisted, horrible sounds. That for sound design especially, can come out quite uh, quite nice, I guess. Or quite useful, I suppose. Um, so the way we do this is we go... Well, first we open Audacity, like I have done here. Uh, then we go to File. We go Import. And we click Raw Data. Now, all we have to do is choose a file, and this file could be literally anything. It could be a Word document, it could be a PDF, uh, it could be a WAV file, an existing audio file if you want. Uh, but for the sake of demonstration, I'm just going to basically go through this video, clicking on any random file and just seeing what we get. Because a lot of this is just experimenting and see what kind of files you get. So as you can see, it's opened up in one of my Unity folders. So I'm just going to click one of these files here. Let's have a look at what they are. So we've got some document files log files, zips. I'm not sure if it works with zips. We'll probably won't try it with them. We'll try one of these. Let's just click this fmod editor file. Open it up. Now, once you open up a file, you get this sort of menu. And I guess this is a way of adjusting how you want the raw data to be imported uh, and how, for example, you want it to be encoded and stuff like that. Um, again, is this is just a case of experimenting. There is no set rule for this. It depends on what you're kind of looking for in your weird glitchy sounds and also kind of what files you're using. Uh, so I'm literally just going to go through this video and try some stuff out. So let's start with, let's start with, well, we'll actually we'll start with a signed 8-bit PCM. Uh, I think that would means it will be, you know, there'll be less information encoded, I guess. <laughs> I don't really know much about encoding, to be honest. Uh, we'll leave that the same. We'll keep it mono. Why not? Sample rate, yep, that's fine. Let's just import it. Now, little warning. Oh, look, you can already see we've got some weird sounds. Little heads up. These sounds can come out quite loud. I am going to turn this down a little bit, but in case you're wearing headphones, just be wary, okay? So let's see what kind of sounds we got from that. Whoa, that was really quick. That's a shame. The first one we pulled out was very instant. If I turn the playback speed down a little bit, I might be able to get a better idea of what we're hearing. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> let's try that one more time. I thought that worked. No, okay. All right, no worries. That was a bit of a shame. Let's try another one out. So we've got file, import, raw data. Uh, let's try and grab a longer file this time, something a bit bigger. So there was one in particular I used earlier. Was it in my documents? Let me try and see if I can find it. The, yeah, there was one I used earlier that came up really well. I think it was one of my documents. I think it was one of these. Let's try this. I think it was this. Um, what you might notice is sometimes you'll get a lot of noise from the files you import. And that could sometimes be good, again, if you if that's what you want, if you want like some white, weird white noise. Uh, but not necessarily all the time, obviously. I'm, in particular, I'm trying to find some weird glitchy sound effects. So, let's turn this down a little bit and see what we get. Hopefully you guys heard that. I've been told that sometimes I let my audio sink too low and it's sometimes unhearable. Uh, but I know <laughs> I know in this case the audio comes out really loud. So hopefully you heard that clear enough and it wasn't blowing your ears off. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, we get some really weird twisted sounds from that, which is great if you're trying to make some sound effects for maybe a computer one can or maybe a robot that's suffering errors. Uh, in Audacity, like I said earlier, or I tried to get it to work and it didn't seem to work, you can change the playback speed if you wanted to slow down or speed it up. Let's try that. So that's what's doing wrong with the playback speed. You need to hit the play button here. And that just gives you sort of 
uh, a demonstration of how it would sound sped up or slowed down. Uh, let's try and pull the, the marker over here. <laughs> So okay, that's not bad for a start, but obviously that's very noisy. We want something a bit more glitchy, so let's let's have another route around. If we go import raw data, uh, there was oh, I should have made a note. There were some files earlier I found that gave us some really cool, uh, really cool twisty error sounds. Uh, let's mess around with some of the settings. Let's go a law. No idea what that does, but let's find out. Sure, we'll do that. Let's make this stereo this time. Let's see what happens then. We'll leave the sample rate. Okay, so import. Oh, we've got some interesting waveforms here again i'm going to turn it down a little bit just because i'm worried about how loud it will be we'll leave it there and let's see what we got oh see that's kind of what we want so as you can see you can get some really weird staticky noises which is really cool um let's let's, let's see if that sounds sped down a bit <laughs> it's really it's a really fun thing to play around with okay let's try one more file let's see what we get Raw data. Let's try and go a bit. Actually, I'll tell you what. Let's try it. Because earlier I tried importing a WAV file. And it literally gave me the, the song I imported. It was just exactly the same. So let's try and see if we can. Well, let's see what happens when we import some audio. Because it is interesting to see, like I said, some of the effects we get. Uh, I'm just going to quickly import this song. Let's go with something weird. Uh, let's try. Let's try this 12-bit. Let's go with that. Uh, as, as I said earlier, it's just a case of experimenting and see what you get. Import. Oh, well, that was... <laughs> that didn't work at all. Okay, one more try. One more try. Let's go. We'll use the same track. Maybe we won't do the same settings. We'll keep... Okay, we'll leave it like that. We'll leave it like that. In stereo. Let's see what we get. Oh, okay. So I'm guessing by this is going to be very loud and probably just noise. So let's turn this down a bit and see what we get. Okay, so it's just a load of white noise. Um, but yeah, hopefully you can see the sort of potential this kind of has. It's a really cool way of instantly getting some staticky, crazy electronic sounds. Um, so for sound design, it's great. You know, hopefully some of you guys may end up doing some robotic-y error sounds and this can come in handy. Um, in the past, I mean, if I've ever wanted to do this kind of thing, I usually just grab a software synthesizer and just twist the modulators and the oscillators until I get something really weird. But this is a great way of starting off. Granted, it is a bit of trial and error, so it might take you some time to find out what kind of files you have to, you know, import in and what kind of settings you have to give it. But, you know, I mean, after a few minutes, we've got some really cool effects already, uh, which obviously then you can, you can take from that. I haven't done any processing after that here. I've literally just showed off some examples. But you can process that a little bit more and you could get some really cool sounds. So, uh, so that's been our my sound design tutorial for today. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, hopefully, I'll be doing some more sound design tutorials and hopefully some more Unity and FMOD tutorials because they seem to be going down really well, especially the last one, which is great to see. Um, and also, uh, in case some of you missed it, I just recently uploaded a video. It's like a minute long, if that, of me using Microsoft's Hololens. It's such a cool thing to try out, you know. So. It's it's really it's like VR, but the next step, if that makes sense. So please check that out if you know technology and development and games interests you, because it's really cool to see you know me interacting with this thing, and you you can see it through my perspective, which is really cool. Um, luckily, I was able to get a chance to work on some sounds with it for a small little game jam. Um, so that was great, you know, being a part of developing software for the Hololens. So if, if that kind of interests you, you know, check it out. It's only like half a minute because sadly that's all we could record. But yeah, um, I think that's everything to mention. So thanks again for watching. I've been Henry Scott. I'll catch you in the next one.